Another religious decision that has split France. Ahead of the new school year next week, the French government has announced that the abia, a long, loose-fitting dress worn by many Muslim women, will not be permitted in schools. The cited reason behind the move is laïcité, or secularism, a French constitutional principle separating church and state, which has been in effect since 1905. Religious symbols have been banned in schools since before this law came into action, originally prohibiting Catholic symbols in public education in order to limit the church's influence. But over time, this ban has expanded, including Jewish yarmulkes and Muslim headscarves. Whilst many have praised the French government, saying that the Abiyas were infringing on the ideas of secularism, this has also drawn criticism for supposed Islamophobia, claiming that laïcité has been hijacked from its original purpose in order to fuel racism. Furthermore, many have pointed out that the dress is not a religious symbol, rather a cultural fashion accessory. Is the Abiyya ban rooted in Islamophobia, or is it just following the French constitution? Has the ideals of separation between church and state been hijacked by extremists? By wearing religious clothing in French schools, are you disrespecting the culture and traditions of the nation? Should French schools ban abias? All right, so let's get to it. Should French uh, schools ban the veil? Uh, as always, uh, dear uh, guests, we begin with our quick fire round, 30 seconds each to lay out your initial stance on the matter, and we'll pick up the conversation now from there. Uh, so, Mr. Masaya, please take the lead. Your 30 seconds are on. Yeah, uh, those, those who defend the, the ban of uh, Abaya. Uh, uh, are looking uh, to abaya as an Islamic and religious dress. But uh, the Islamic community here, um, uh, uh, the majority of it, uh, say, says that abaya is not a religious dress. So if it is not a religious dress, how come it is Islamophobic to ban it? Mm. So this is a first paradox. The second paradox is you, ca you cannot let in huge community of Muslims and ban them yeah. from being Muslims in France. This asks also the right. uh, in policy. All right, we will continue uh, from that point in a second. Uh, Orna Kad, your, your thoughts? Um, I think they shouldn't uh, ban uh, the Avaya or as, as we call it here, uh, Jilbab. Uh, it's, you know, it's their affair, what they are wearing. I. I think it's uh, this law will do exactly exactly the opposite. It it will increase the private school where or uh, the schools, the Islamic schools in the uh, mosques, which they will go there and they will get a ghetto there. They don't be involved with the French community. All right. Last but not least, Dan Perry, your take. <laughs> My take is that a wise man would avoid this debate at all costs. Uh, <laughs> look, and yet. <laughs> as, as a liberal, I, I cannot possibly wholeheartedly embrace uh, <clears throat> bans on clothing or limits of expression. On the other hand, I, I do respect the right of the French secular state to promote secularism in its state schools if it's egalitarian vis-a-vis -vis all religions and if it has broad public support. And on yet the other hand, the abaya, unlike the niqab, which has uh, security issues attached to it with facial recognition, mm -hmm. it's just a dress. And I, I tend to think this will prove to be a ban too far. Well, a dress is never just a dress, isn't it? Uh, all right, uh, please, uh, let's feel free to uh, engage in a conversation uh, from this point uh, uh, onward. So, um, uh, Mr. Messiah, let me begin with you. I wouldn't ask, is it Islamophobia? Because I believe that your, your answer is clear on that. But let it be yes or not. Is it fueling Islamophobia, this ban? No, I think uh, the abaya is fueling francophobia mm. uh, because those who who uh, does not uh, do not want to integrate uh, into the uh, French society by dressing the way the French people are dressed, those are in a, a, a project of hatred of France. They do not want to integrate uh, by their dress. So let alone the other aspects of integration into the French society. This is the first aspect. Second aspect, this has nothing nothing to do with law. For example, when uh, Neymar, 
came to Saudi Arabia mm. with the cross around his neck. All yeah. the Algerian uh, newspaper uh, 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 scratched uh, the, the, cro the cross from the picture on uh, the press. Why? Is it a law in Algeria that ban people from wearing crosses? No. The Algerian people told this cross uh, uh, is a, a provocation against our national identity, which is Islamic. And I understand this very well. So why don't we uh, apply this logic to the French people? French, France also has a national identity and Abaya also all the veils and niqab yeah. are not part of our national identity. So it is not something to be discussed yes. through uh, the law or through the uh, or through the right. Mm. It is to be discussed. Is it something that belong to, to the national French identity or no? And the answer is no. Oh, no. Who decides? No, Who Dan, decides please. that? Yeah. I have to say, who decides where, where the line is drawn? What is a matter of diversity that we embrace? And what is a question of national identity, a line that cannot possibly be crossed? If, for example, uh, someone were to claim that the, that the very practicing the very practicing of Judaism were somehow against the French national identity, and, and a plebiscite determined the majority thought this, would you be in favor of it? No, because the problem is the number because we, have, we, don't, we don't have millions of Jews that are in such revendications of the special dresses, special food, and so on. When you have a community that also have, uh, almost have 15 or 20 million people, it is the third of, of the population of France that is asking uh, revendications that uh, are not belonging to the historical national identity of France, the historical people refuses that. It considers a kind of aggression, of a, a kind of supremacism uh, no. to, their, in, to their own country. Yeah, okay. Can you dress, for example, as a, with a KKK dress or a dress of crusader inside Morocco? No law, right. no law yeah. for, forbids this. But nobody well, will but do But if it I may, just real quick, Morocco, uh, you're talking about countries in North Africa that are illiberal countries, and we sort of accept that they're illiberal. France's whole identity, part of the identity that you're no, trying to preserve, well, right. is liberalism. Right. Or, yeah. Or, Orna, please chime Tolerance. in. Tolerance. Yeah. Yeah. Why you are but, considering uh, yeah, both Orna, countries Orna, with, uh, with such a... Mr. Messi, uh, let, let's uh, take a listen to Orna, please, yeah. Okay. What, what uh, uh, um, I think... Uh, he, you bring this liber liberalism to a new religious, abandon some, somebody to wear something. What is the dress code of the French people? How, how you, what they, in, uh, wearing a dress, wearing a trousers, wearing, you know, what, it is, what, not what hijab, is the dress it's code? No, but the question so big, Orna, if by wearing religious clothes, you are, in, in, in France, you are disrespecting the French culture. No, exactly. I, I don't when you go, know when, why. Why? You don't know what, what is behind the hijab. You don't know uh, if uh, the girl or the woman is forced by her family, I'm just saying it, for example, to wear this, uh, this, this hijab. This is worse. So uh, you, don't, you, don't, you don't know what is behind this. Because I, I've been living for the last 30 years with the Muslims and with uh, women who are wearing a hijab. So it is a, a, a hijab and a, a, a baya, or as we call it, jilbab, it's, it's a religious dress. Uh, you can say okay. it's not, but it is. It's covered and yeah. It, as as they respect, but, but should it, respect. shouldn't a country, shouldn't a country, ha, uh, uh, you know, um, um, uh, had the prerogative to to have a, its own set of values that yes, transcend or undermine other values? Uh, Ellie, there's a there's so a paradox is, here. Please, Dan. Yeah. The, the, the paradox is, is that. What is the value? Please go ahead, Orna. What is what is uh, values? Values is respecting. Uh, all the religious, that's the, by the name of the freedom. What is about the Jewish Yamak? Values is so to Jewish respect Yamaka the national culture. Cover, uh, uh, Jewish, uh, uh, Jewish Yamaka, you can wear a, a beret or something like that and then you cover your head, you know. Uh, so, so, the counter, to... so, sin, so the counterclaim here is, is secular coercion, not Islamophobia, Dan. 
Yeah, I, I think that's the fundamental paradox. France is trying to, uh, uh, um, uh, to assert its own liberalism, and it's confronted with a culture that it believes to be illiberal. I think that's the elephant in the room. They're not really going after the other religions. They're afraid of the Muslims because they think something about Muslim uh, culture, uh, if allowed to flourish in, in France, would endanger their own liberalism. So the uh, undignified position France finds itself in is... Uh, that in the name of liberalism, it finds itself being illiberal about the other because it fears the other. And uh, whether it fears the other for good or bad reasons, I think, is another debate. But it's clear that that's what's happening here. They're trying to suppress Islam. And uh, as the numbers of Muslims in France no. go, I doubt this will go very well. No, I, do, I do not agree with this point of view because there is an old proverb saying, when in Rome, do as Romans do. I am not disagree with the fact that a Muslim woman or a Muslim, a Muslim man must wear special dresses to respect his own religion. This is perfectly respectable, and I'm not discussing this point. But the countries that accept these special uh, dresses and this special culture and this special religion, it already exists. If I am Muslim and I want to live an integral Islam by dressing the way the Prophet was dressed, by eating things uh, that are uh, authorized in my religion. Why I stay in a country which is not Islamic? I go to a country where I feel comfortable to live in with my own identity. So this is essentially... You cannot come in a country yeah. and impose because, because one of and the principles your of that country. particularism to the country. Be this is because one of the principles of that country was meant to be tolerance of all cultures. Yeah. That is part of the Western ideal. No. And, in the, and, and it attaches no. to the paradox I mentioned before. Yeah, multiculturalism we don't really accept uh, collapsing uh, uh, to no. itself. No, this is, this is true. This is true in the Anglo-Saxon countries, not in France. In France, the notion of citizenship must transcend all the particularism and all the uh, uh, particular identities of the people. When you go outside in France, you must behave as a citizen, which you cannot see what, what religion, what you, to what religion you belong, to what social class you belong, etc. You understand? You are not in America here or in Great Britain. All you right. do know France is part of the EU. Well, okay, we, we will put a stop right here because we, we have to take a quick break, but we will continue from that point For exactly once we're back. So do not go anywhere. A few minutes and we're back with our summit. Don't go anywhere. Welcome back to the summit. Still with us, John Messia, Dan Perry, Norna Cod. Thank you all so very much uh, for staying with us. We're also uh, staying on topic, of course. But before we uh, get back to our conversation, uh, is France losing its identity or, or merely expanding it? You no, know, uh, growing pains of sorts. Uh, let's take a listen to what uh, President Emmanuel Macron had to say back in uh, 2020 uh, when he uh, wanted to cut down on, uh, on Islamic uh, separatism. Take a listen. With this radical Islamism, this is the central topic, so let's talk about it and give it a name. There is a desire, openly stated, a methodical organization which aims to break the rules of the French Republic and to create a parallel order with other values, nurturing a different organization for society. Separatist at first, but with a final goal to take complete control. As you know, France is a country where the training of imams was organized in foreign countries, but also that of Sarmadists, who were then legally welcomed to France. Turkey, Morocco and Algeria are the countries which provided these imams and Sarmadists. We have decided, with the countries of origin, to end that system in a very calm way, and over an average of four years, for things need to be progressive. I will get back to this. We will ourselves train our imams and Sarmadists, Muslims, in France. All right, let's get to it. Another quick fire round, 30 seconds each, and now we take it uh, from there. Uh, uh, does French domestic policy inadvertently fuel extremism? Um, uh, Orna Akkad, please take the lead. Yes, of course. It's been very nationality and the, the very extreme and bring the nationalism to uh, national, the French nationalism to a religious. What is a French nationalism? It's bring back to very dark places, you know, when 
when the governments abandoned churches and abandoned the synagogues and abandoned mosques and next step they will abandon mm -hmm. the talking in Arabic because it's not the French language. Then Perry, what do you think? Look, uh, banning um, cultural manifestations of, of certain minorities obviously is going to uh, alienate those communities. It's going to deepen uh, the sense of discrimination, and it could very well uh, provide a tool for the recruitment by extremists of uh, new extremists. I think the French know this, though. I doubt it's inadvertent. I think they view this as a fight they must engage in. Last but not least, Jean-Messier, your thoughts? Uh, French is facing a, a new totalitarianism, mm. which is uh, Islamic, and uh, this totalitarianism has his, its collaborators and its resistance. So uh, the, the solution of that is not to allow the totalitarianism to expand. The solution to that is to make the hard uh, and strong hand of the republic break down on this totalitarianism, totalitarianism to, to break it, and to break it manifest, its public manifestations. So, so you know what, let's begin our conversation from this point exactly, uh, Mr. Messia. Whatever the reason is, criminalization, uh, is criminalization uh, the appropriate response for it? Uh, no, it's uh, to put limits uh, on uh, the expansion, on the, 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 the supremacism, of the radical Islam, which is uh, uh, defigurating the Republic in many parts of our national territories. You have now many territories, when you go inside, you are not in France. You believe you are in an Arabic country where applies the Sharia, where applies the dress code of Saudi Arabia. This is not France. And you cannot tolerate that uh, uh, under the line of, uh, of liberty and, and individual freedom. No country allows this. When you go in any other country on the planet, you respect the national identity of uh, the country. If you do not feel comfortable with the national identity of the country, you are free to go and live in the country. You, you can uh, that's uh, not exactly practice true. your own particularism freely. That's not true. Look, I have a lot of sympathy for secularism. Yeah, I, I really do. But, but I've also been around the world. Wherever you go, you have to respect the laws of that country. But the idea of imposing a certain no. culture and expecting everyone to fall in line is itself totalitarian. You must be aware of this. No, That's sir. why labels aren't the, helpful. The national identity, the national identity and the national cultural does not limit it to law. This is what I'm trying to explain. Well, no in law, America, no law, in America, and for that matter, no law, in no Israel. Law Listen, the no, no law forbids, for example, the crosses to be worn in uh, the Arabic country. But the Arabic countries consider it's a provocation for their national identity. They and don't pretend to be democracies. You they cannot. don't pretend to be democracies. In America, you cannot ban a certain kind of address. It would be ridiculous. Same thing applies in Israel, by the way. This and again, America I say this with a person who has a lot of sympathy for laicite. No, but, but uh, is it the flip side of the same coin, the, the Iranian ban from taking the veil uh, off uh, and the French ban from putting it on? Uh, omission and commission are not the same thing. It's, uh, I think it's a false equivalence, although it is an appealing one to examine. <laughs> I, think, I think what we have here is one of the fundamental questions of life in a world that is full of migration. Do we expect the migrants to adopt the culture of the uh, host country, of the, of, of the receiving country? And uh, I, I understand your answer is yes, monsieur. I really do. But the degree to which, the, the vehemence yes. with which you do it, is rather unique on the planet, or at least in the realm of democratic no. countries. Democratic countries. It's very I know, unique. But just just an answer to that quickly. Yes, please. The French model is, is the model of assimilation. That means that when you come to France and you have the national uh, citizenship of France, you must behave like a French and you have wear the national French identity. This is not the model in the United States. <laughs> I have family in the United That's States true. that are origi originated from or, Egypt as, yeah. as me. They live like Egyptians. We are not in France. Is not the Anglo-Saxon sample. Here we have laicite, which is a concept 
that is very foreign to uh, to, the, to American and Anglo-Saxon culture. We have a unique model, mm. and we are uh, uh, we, right. we, in, we are in favor of maintaining ferociously this model in France. So, Laissez-faire so totalitarianism. Uh, I think that would be a fair question. So, so, so <laughs> Orna, Orna, shouldn't assimilation no. or lack thereof be a legitimate talking point? Uh, we we were handling, we, you know, we're carrying out the debate uh, from the French standpoint. But what about the Muslim communities? Assimilation is not necessarily something they're they're aspiring to. Uh, first, um, you know, what I hear that uh, you know. Uh, you uh, put the fundamentalism near the is Islam, which is which is very very sad, because Islam is a religious, and in the this religious there are the fundamentalism. The re <laughs> the, sorry, uh, the reality is that there are a lot of you know the Muslims invent the math, and invent a lot of and the medicine, and invent a lot of. Uh, good Wrong. thing to the world. So, uh, so uh, you know, to, 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 to put the Egyptians. A, a, as a, a you know a link together, uh, Islam and fundamentalism is very sad. And also to uh, see a girl wearing what is a hijab or wearing a jilbab and connect her with fundamentalism, it's also very sad because. A lot of them are very, uh, you know, academic, going to the university, doing their PhD, and, you know, very educated women who choose a lot the of times to is wear all this. the places uh, where the Islam is majority, the Jews cannot wear a kippah, you know? When the places where Islam is majority, no other particularism in dresses can be expressed. And the Jews quitted those do regions. You, so do you want to do you, do you want to compare France to Saudi Arabia? Do you want to compare? No, no. Here uh, in France. Do you want to compare here France, France to uh, I was, I was, I was, I was, some countries? Miss Akkad, you want to, I am you talking want to about a, a, a France. Liberal, all the all West. the regions in uh, France where you have Muslim right. majority, you do not. But have Orna, you're anymore. contradicting yourself because on the one hand you're saying Islam is so uh, advanced uh, these days, and on the other hand you're saying do you want to compare yourself? to Saudi Arabia. I think you have to choose one position or the other. All right, but we will not be, the, be doing this choosing this time around because we ran out of time. Uh, thank you very much, John Messiad and Perry Ornakat, for this. Uh, see you back on the show, of course, sooner rather than later. Hey, I see you liked it. Want more? Just hit the subscribe button right here. Go on. I know you want to.